I've shown you lots of bunkhouses over the years, but I've never shown you something quite like that before. Hey everybody, welcome to Cal Spell, Montana. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, and this is an RV that has two names. Out here in the west, it's called the 26 DBS, and out east uh, from the Indiana-built uh, production facility, it's called the 24 DBS. It's basically the same unit, although if you get on Heartland's website, they have like barely different stats on them, but it's essentially the same thing. I don't know why it has two different numbers, but it's one of the most crafty, cool bunkhouses I think I've run into in a long, long time. Basically, it's got one super slide, which encompasses the dining and the bunks. And it's got a lift up move bunk get out the way, but it's got a move wall get out the way system. Because when that super slide closes, the wall has to get out of the way. So this is dealer's choice. You have the opportunity during the day to leave everything wide open and to make the RV look and feel nice and big inside. But when it is time to put everybody to bed, you can quickly close the door and wall to the bunk room and totally privatize that. I've never seen something like that before. And now I'm wondering why not? Because this is brilliant and I absolutely love this thing. Because what it's doing is it's giving us like 35 foot of bunkhouse and something that's just over 30 feet. Now, the thing is this has like over 3,000 pounds of cargo carrying capacity. You can pack heavy in this thing, man. Um, and what that also means is that you're probably never going to overload the axle ratings or anything on this. It's probably an overrated axle, but I don't know that I, I'm, I'm necessarily upset with that. Now, the West Coast Edition that we're looking at has a two-way fridge and a solar package. The Eastern model has solar readiness and a 12-volt fridge. But beyond that, they're, they're essentially the same thing, and I am really pumped to get you through this thing. I can't wait to hear what you think about it. Now, we're going to get to the Alakazam uh, vanishing David Blaine bunk room door wall wombo combo in a minute. That's actually its full technical name, by the way. It's also uh, illegal in 37 states to, to talk about the RV without explaining it in those exact terms. But this living room uh, kitchen arrangement, it's not terribly unique. You've seen it before. I do really like all the countertop space that this affords, though. And uh, they were able to mount power outlets on the interior constructed hollow walls of the RV instead of the laminated walls. Although, one of the other neat things about this camper is that it actually does have a true two-inch sidewall, which is very, very rare um, in travel trailers. Uh, now, <laughs> facetiously, I say, I'm just not sure the TV is big enough. That is an absolute jumbotron from Cybertron uh, right there. That's, uh, that, that is a large, large television. And down below that, you have the electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster. What you don't have in this RV are floor heating vents or uh, carpet. Um, it kind of looks like carpet on camera over here, but that is one of those uh, marine woven kind of uh, sort of floor uh, systems right there. Now, the RV does not have any sort of seating swaptions. North Trail does not offer a lot in the way of options. Uh, you get the u dinette with this, and that is it. Anything else is going to be DIY. Um, you might, maybe you're not a big fan of the 1980s checkerboard pattern right here. Uh, the thing is, they give you the option to select your style or create your own, basically. Every single one of these cushions has a, uh, a light side backer, kind of like you're looking at there, that kind of off-white, or they have the basically the jet black. So you can kind of uh, transform this to, to whatever you'd like. By the way, jet black and jack black, two different things. Um, the if it was jack black, I tell you what, probably my favorite entertainer in the world, which probably explains a lot about me. Now we're going to get to that private bunk room over there in just a minute, but while we're over here, take a look at the bathroom. There is a medicine cabinet uh, over here around the corner. It's just kind of easy to miss. And the sink is not big, but that does mean that there's more room for like toothbrushes and stuff. So I guess that ain't all bad. Common plastic toilet, a porcelain stool is something that we could upgrade for you at our stores. There was also some pretty decent, respectable room around it. What there is not is good linen space in this. You're going to have to roll a towel up burrito style and then shove it in those little pockets because those are shallow, man. Now the RV's only got a six and a half foot sidewall. 
It does have a miniature vaulted laminated ceiling though. So what that means is that I'm able to stand in that shower room just over six foot, probably close to six two right now with the shoes that I'm wearing. Um, and you know, I can fit in there. But if you're bigger than me, that might be a problem. But what's I think a little more interesting is what is happening uh, over here. So first of all, you just open the door like normal, but there's basically just a little pin in the ceiling that locks that, uh, that, that wall in place. And then it all essentially accordions down and it latches in place so that it stays closed in transit. And that's the thing with this floor plan. When you're going down the road, when the slide's closed, you have to have that door and the wall out of the way. Because while it's not as obvious when it's all closed up, when it's open like this, you actually get to see it is a one continuous super slide with a hard wall partition in the middle of it. This is something I've kind of wondered about for manufacturers for years. I've just always been baffled that we haven't seen more things like this. I think you're going to start to see more concepts and the sort of like um, convertible open to closed uh, corner bunk arrangements, you know, and they they allow privacy in shorter lengths. Little bit of uh, TV hookup space in there, little chalkboard over there to let the kids have a good time, and a window in the back where they get to stare at the neighbors and make them uncomfortable because God bless America. Am I right? <laughs> Now, these bunks are 300-pound rated. You can see they got the latch back for the move bunk, get out the way kind of system right here. But giving you a look, you know, flipping everything down, they're like, I call it a bunk and a half, a big kid bunk. And there is storage below that bottom bunk. If you latch it in the up position, it's much, much easier to get to. But you do have a couple sliding panels to access it. Plus, you got storage under that entire dinette. But to get to the back storage, you are going to have to tear basically everything apart. Um <clears throat> Chalkboard fronts on the refrigerator as well is a little interesting. And the kitchen's pretty straightforward, but effective. Again, I think good counter space, good cabinet space. They've done well there. Uh, what's what's really kind of the star of the show in the kitchen is that just gigantic walk-in pantry tainment uh, system going on behind the entertainment center. There's some serious, serious storage in there. That could also be a good spot for like brooms or, you know, all sorts of little things there. Pardon my coat hanging on the... Uh, the, the uh, Doorknob. Woo. Wow, smoke coming out of my ears. Whew. Wasn't that complicated, but apparently it was. Now up front here, some folks are going to say this is ridiculous, stupid overkill, but these all come with a 72 by 80 king bed. Um, if you don't need a big giant mattress like that, you can always swap it out for a true queen because you might notice how the mattress does hang over the bed base a little bit there. So swapping to a true queen is very, very easy. Uh, there are household and USB plugs on both sides of the bed on those side stands. And I do like how they radius um, the uh, the hanging wardrobe towers at the bottom there. So if you roll over at night, you're not getting stabbed in the shoulder. Now, this whole upper cabinet is one pass-through cavity, which means sometimes you can get a little bit of stuff lost behind this middle section, which I guess is, I don't know, a phone charge station? I haven't entirely figured out exactly what that thing's purpose in life uh, is. Um, there's a little bit of storage going on below the bed here, but as you see, what you have to kind of do is use the bed platform to sort of wedge the mattress up in place unless you want to wrestle the whole thing the, the entire time, which you totally could do, I suppose. And the hanging wardrobe towers are shaved back in this camper because of the king bed. Thankfully, across from the bed over here, they do have a bonus dresser and closet space. Not to mention that's where, if you want to add a TV to the bedroom, that's where that would be located. Now you do have a, uh, a power vent, or pardon me, not a power vent. You have a vent up here um, in the bathroom. I, oh, I'm drawing a blank. I cannot recall if 50 amp service and or second air conditioner is available on this model. I will try to leave some notes on screen to, to, to fill in that blank basically. But uh, if I forget, I don't know, leave me a comment, let me know and I'll try to update you individually. Ah, crap. I paused there in the bedroom, hoping when the slide was closed, I'd be able to slip between the kitchen counter and the slide fascia. And I j just, just couldn't. I'm just too big. It, my, my legs, my even my skinny chicken legs don't fit. But this is a cable slide system. So if you are in a spot where you can crack that just slightly, like you need to get up to the bedroom just to, to load and unload or pack some stuff up, there's absolutely no problems with doing that. Though it should be noted, you shouldn't leave it like that any longer than you have to. I don't recommend doing that in the rain, and you should not 
occupy this slide out when the slide is retracted. You should only do that when it is completely open because that's the only time it's really guaranteed to be fully supported. What is nice, you can get to your kitchen. Um, the bathroom's right here next to the entry door, so there's no questions about uh, being able to get in there. And just in case someone wants me to prove it, yes, the door can swing open and close. There you go. Now, someone's going to ask, ooh, can we still use the bunks in transit? Remember, it's part of the slide. I don't recommend you occupy that with anything except like the designated cargo zones already intended from the manufacturer, which is a bummer. I get it. Like this is really close to being super awesome for travel access in that regard. But I do hope you appreciate how we take the time to kind of give you that extra detail information so that you don't end up busting your RV. Because if you decide to climb in there and you knock something out of alignment, that ain't warranty. You're going to pay for that fix. And, and really, the, the length of this, like just over 30 feet, if you look at the dry weight and the wide stance stability axles, it starts to feel very half ton towable to me. But with the GVW uh, factoring in that monster cargo capacity and considering you may go through some adverse terrain like heavy inclines and elevations and, and windy zones, mm, your vehicle may want to be more of a three quarter ton. It really just depends on the exact capacities of your vehicle and where you're going to be. That being said, you know, approaching a 10K GVW, three quarter does start to feel like the right answer. Now in the bottom right corner, you saw some TPMS prep. And that is just a massive storage compartment up in there, brother. One of the other things that's really interesting, it looks just like it's nicely finished, but the bed deck that you're sleeping on inside is the, it, it, the bottom of that is the top of the passer. It's a fully laminated structure. So what that means is you have a pretty hard thermal break between you and the outside in that bedroom. So if it's chilly at night and a little bit of cold air, because uh, the, the baggage doors are never as thick as the sidewalls, especially considering this has a thicker two inch sidewall, um, it just, it'll keep you more comfortable is, is what I'm getting at. Now you've got four corner power stabilizer jack standard on these enclosed heated belly, but this design, it's got a couple hiccups. One of those is that it has no camp kitchen. But not everybody cares about that. A lot of people, the number one request I get with a camp kitchen RV is can I get it without the camp kitchen? Well, this one just doesn't have a camp kitchen. And instead, it just gives you maximum wide open patio space. Now the wide stance stability axles right there are going to help the RV feel like it's shorter than it actually is. So it'll uh, tow and go pretty nicely. Um, the, uh, I, I'm, 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 a little, I'm a little surprised this doesn't have the, uh, the the ladder prep on the back of it like some of the other ones. I'll have to double check the build date on this because as far as I know, the, um, the ladder mount for one of those telescopic removable ladders, that's now standard equipment. It is possible this specific RV was built right before that standardization took place and it may just still be in stock here. I don't know that, that's just a theory. Local teams can always verify. If you need to know about ladder hookups or whatever, call our team. Uh, our, our team member can send you a picture of the back of the exact North Trail that you might be shopping so we can take all of the guesswork out of the equation. But this angle that I'm standing at was actually the very first I ever got to see this RV. I was walking through the lot and I went, uh, what? And I was, because like when you do this job for a while, you learn to read RVs based on things like slide locations and windows. And when you see double stacked windows, that means bunks. And you don't normally see bunks and dining in one slide. And as soon as I figured out what I was looking at, I was like, yeah, haul that one over here. I'm putting that on camera. Now, trying to share the good with the bad, with everything in between, you do have a two-headed sewer monster. You do have the bathroom black and gray uh, outlet over there. And then you do have a kitchen gray outlet up here. Thankfully, they made sure to uh, not put this hookup under the slide, but your bathroom black and gray, there's just no way around it. It is absolutely buried under that super slide. And that might be a problem for some people. So I hope you appreciate that I go out of my way to sometimes point out things that are not awesome about the campers that we have. But if you look up top in that fully walkable laminated roof, you see the solar panel up there. That again is uh, very indicative of the Western production North Trails. Um, People who've watched the channel a little bit, you may also notice different color nose cap. The Western North Trails have basically an all white exterior. The Eastern North Trails have like a, a black nose cap, but still white sidewalls. Why? Well, I don't know. <laughs> 
because reasons. Now I like to leave you links in the video description to check for pricing and availability. I always like to do that for you. But in this case, I'm gonna have to leave two, one for the 24 and one for the 26 DBS because they are different model numbers. I need to leave you two different links. So depending on where you're at in the country, if you're out west, you wanna shop the 26. If you're out east, you wanna shop the 24. And either way, that's a cool model, man. I love, what do you think of that? I think more I think more campers should kind of look at what they've done here. Um, but it does have some downsides. This design, again, doesn't allow for a camp kitchen. It doesn't allow for like a cargo bunk situation. So it's not the be all end all. But if you don't care about camp kitchens, if you don't care about cargo bunks, I don't, I don't know how you go wrong with something like this. This is slick as a skateboard trick. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.